Grammar rules are logical and exact. Everybody loves to be corrected. I can tell you from experience, they don't. The fact is, while the grammar police act like these rules were laid down by God herself, they can change and morph over time, just like language does. How dare you? The rules are the rules. She ain't listening. Don't say ain't, dear. It's low class. Funny you say that. Up until the 1800s, ain't was a proper contraction of am not used by the upper class. Are you attending Lady Margaret's soiree? I won't, I shan't, I ain't. It wasn't until the lower classes began to use it that the word fell out of fashion and was deemed bad English. I ain't going either. What luck? Now we can hang out together. How vulgar. I'll never use that word again. Shun, shun, shun. And now, when someone says ain't, grammar nuts literally go insane. <laughs> Aha, I've got you now. You said literally when you meant figuratively. That's actually the opposite of what you meant. It's wrong, and it's always been wrong. So be gone. <laughs> Oh, wrong again, Ms. Dazzle. People have been using literally as a hyperbolic intensifier for literally hundreds of years. Hogwash! Charles Dickens used it. He had literally feasted his eyes upon the culprit. So did Charlotte Bronte. Literally, I was the apple of his eye. Not to mention Mark Twain, James Joyce, F. Scott Fitzgerald, <gasps> and Vladimir Nabokov. Ah! But those are the English language's greatest writers. Didn't they know about the rule? The fact is, there was no documented rule against using literally this way until 1909, when author Ambrose Bierce wrote a grammar book titled, Write It Right. To those who use literally when you mean figuratively, it is bad enough to exaggerate, but to affirm the truth of the exaggeration is intolerable.